there here at the History Museum, and I said, let's do this. He said, let's do this. So I'm going to do a 90-minute talk, uh, Thursday, June 14th, starting at 7 o'clock, right here in this very auditorium called the Illustrated History of the St. Louis Dragons. I hope you can make it. It's free. I've also reached out to my friend Kevin Reddick. Kevin is a local uh, singer and songwriter. He is best known for his song, Up in the Air, which ran uh, during the closing credits of the movie Up in the Air, which starred George Clooney and was filmed here in St. Louis. And Kevin wrote a song called The Twilight of the Dragon. We're gonna, he's going to come out and play that song. He's going to play a second song as well. We haven't quite figured out. Uh, what that's going to be. So try to make that if you can. I've got some flyers for it. I'm, I, I brought a stack of flyers for it. I'm going to put them back there uh, here in a minute. So grab a flyer for my drive-in talk. But today I'm here to talk about Vincent Price. Vincent Price, of course, should be included in any talk about the St. Louis Hall of Fame. In fact, when Joe Edwards started the St. Louis Walk of Fame in 1990, uh, Vincent Price was one of the honorees the very first year that uh, Joe did that. Vincent Price, of course, was born right here in St. Louis, born and raised here in St. Louis. There's Vincent Price's baby picture, isn't he cute? That was when he was uh, probably one years old or so. He was born May 27, 1911. And uh, there's another picture of Vincent Price as a boy. There he is with his older brother, Mort. Uh, Vincent Price lived over on, there's another sort of devilish picture of Vincent Price. I like that one as well. This was Vincent Price's boyhood home. It's in the 6,000 block of Forsyth. It's about four or five houses west of Skinker on Forsyth, right across from the Washington University School of Architecture. Washington University owns this house now, and it's used for faculty housing, believe it or not. There's some professor or some administrator at Washington University that gets to live in this house um, that Vincent Price grew up in. The Price family was very wealthy. This was the largest candy company in the world right here. It was a national candy company. Vincent Price's father, uh, was the president and CEO of the National Candy Company. This building still stands. It's over at uh, Chippewa and Grabway. Uh, it, it stopped making candy in the 40s. Uh, is when, is, I think 1941 was when Vincent Price's father sold this building. It was on the market for many, many years. About two years ago, uh, the U-Haul Company finally bought this building. I don't think they've done a whole lot with it yet. They're going to use it as an open it up as a storage facility. This is a, this is on the entranceway. This is sort of this terracotta sculpture of candy. Um, and it's, it's sort of built into the side of the building over the entranceway. It's about you know, four or five feet wide. It's still there. And it's remarkable how vivid the colors are in this little piece of artwork. Um, I hope the U-Haul people are able to uh, get this down without damaging it when they, when they restore this building if they haven't already. It, it really is nice and deserves to be in a museum. Uh, St. Louis Country Day School. This is where Vincent Price went to high school. Country Day. Uh, he was in class in 1927. This is how the school looked when Vincent Price was a student there. Um, Country Day School merged with Mary Institute in, I think, around 1991, and it's now known as MICBS. But back when Vincent Price was a student there, it was uh, near the airport. Vincent Price would walk to the Chase Park Plaza and catch a, uh, an electric shuttle or a, yeah, a, a street, uh, yeah, exactly, an electric streetcar, and, and take, that's how he would get to school every day. Uh, here's a couple of interesting pictures. There's Vincent Price on the far left, and he was about 15 years old uh, as a student at Country Day, and there's his senior uh, portrait there on the right. See, this is interesting. This is a program for Vincent Price's first acting performance, the archivist. A fellow named Cliff Saxon, who was the archivist at MICDS, dug this up. None of, the, none of Vincent Price's biographers had seen this before. Um, Troubadours was the name of the Thespian troupe at uh, MICDR Country Day. It still is called the Troubadours, by the way. And uh, Vincent Price acted in a, a musical called Pickles in 1927. So he would have been about, let's see, he would have been 15, I guess, when he was in Pickles in 1927. And Vincent Price went on to Yale. University, and of course became the actor we all know and love. There he is on stage in 1935 in Victoria Regina, where, where he uh, co-starred with Helen Hayes. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to talk about Vincent Price's movie career. I could talk about Vincent Price for hours and hours, um, but I'm not going to today. Uh, but he had quite the career. Of course, he starred in Laura. With, uh, he was on contract player for 20th Century Fox, and then, of course, he went on to star in classics such as The Tingler and, of course, all the great Edgar Allan Poe films and 
uh, so, so many other films. Theater of Blood, everybody loves this one. And he did tons of television in the 1970s, especially. There he is on the Carol Burnett Show and the Brady Bunch and Hollywood Squares. The guy was everywhere. He never turned down a role. He never turned down one of these television roles either. He was on every t TV show. And somebody at once asked him, you know, wouldn't you rather be doing Shakespeare in the park instead of um, these goofy TV shows? And he said, well, I have two alimonies to pay. And I collect art. I'm surprised that they big art collectors. He, so he did it for the money, but he always, he always gave it his all. There he is collecting art. He wrote books about art. He, he was a world-renowned uh, art historian. He was also a gourmet chef. This book here, uh, The Treasure of Great Recipes by Vincent Price and his second wife, Mary Price, is one of, really one of the best-selling cookbooks of all time. And there's, there, there he is getting ready to fillet something. Um, <laughs> And uh, this is a program from 1973 at Powell Hall. I, this is the one time I, I had the honor of meeting Vincent Price. I was 11 years old. I was this weird horror movie obsessed kid. And Vincent Price went to the Powell Hall and he recited Edgar Allan Poe poems while the St. Louis Symphony played background music. And I, like I said, I was just a kid. I was 10 or 11. Uh, my dad took me and we got to meet him backstage and he signed our program. I wish he. Back in those days, you just bring your camera with you wherever you want. I wish I had had my picture taken with them. Uh, but I didn't. But I still have this, and I'm glad I do. This brings us to Vincent Tenniel. Now, Vincent Tenniel was the uh, Vincent Price 100th birthday celebration. Vincent Price died in October of 1993. Um, so his 100th birthday, like I said, he was born May 27, 1911. So his 100th birthday would have been... May 27th of 2011. About a year before that, probably the spring of 2010, I got the idea that St. Louis should celebrate Vincent Price's birthday because, I, 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 in my opinion anyway, he was the most famous movie star from here. Other cities, like Philadelphia does a semi-annual um, W.C. Field celebration and, and some city in Indiana does a James Dean day, where James Dean is from, and I thought, well, we, we really need to celebrate Vincent Price and his birthday. Vincent Price loved St. Louis. He always said nice things about St. Louis, unlike Tennessee Williams, who would never had anything good to say about St. Louis. Uh, Vincent Price would come back to St. Louis and perform, like I say, at Powell Hall. He performed at the Muni in Oliver and um, damn Yankees, so he, he came back and he spoke at school, so he had nothing but good things to say about St. Louis and a lot of goodwill towards St. Louis, so I thought we should celebrate uh, the Vincent Price 100th birthday, and at, at the time I was hosting a film series at a nightclub in South St. Louis called the, the Way Out Club, and my idea was to throw a Vincent Price 100th birthday party at the Way Out Club and, and have a Vincent Price cake and show some films, but this idea grew and grew, and people just had came up with other ideas oh, we should do an exhibit and a film festival, et cetera, et cetera. So finally, at some point, I reached out to Cliff Fralick. Cliff is the uh, executive director of Cinema St. Louis, and Cinema St. Louis is a very, uh, very professional uh, cinema-related event planning group. And I, I, I sort of pitched this idea to Cliff. I said, Cliff, I have this idea for the Vincent Price 100th birthday celebration. Cliff liked the idea and Vincent Tenniel fell under the umbrella of Cinema St. Louis. And it all took place in May of 2011. It got a lot of great publicity. There was on the cover of the Riverfront Times. There was on the Go section of the uh, Post-Dispatch. Steve DeMellis, a wonderful St. Louis historian, did the, the Globe Democrat. You may remember that at newsstands. We did a, a whole Vincent Price issue, and we had all kinds of stuff all kinds of interesting articles in this. Unfortunately, we lost Steve about uh, two years ago, or two years after the Vincent Price thing, I should say. Uh, we did the Legacy of Vincent Price exhibit at the Sheldon. I'm gonna talk about this one a little bit. This is a, we actually talked to, to this museum about possibly bringing this exhibit here, but the, the timing wasn't right. The timing really wasn't right at the Sheldon either. You gotta, you really need to approach these places two or three years in advance. The Sheldon really wanted to host this exhibit, so they made space for us. I curated this exhibit. I had no experience curating an exhibit, but I did. Uh, Mary Strauss gave me $3,000. That was the budget of this exhibit. Most of that money was spent bringing in objects. But Vincent Price was a hoarder, and I, and I tracked down a lot of these things from Vincent Price's um, childhood. 
Like, there's his baby book. I saw the guy that had his baby book. Those are Vincent Price's gloves. There's a lock in his hair from when he was a baby. Um, that was in the exhibit. Here's a, um, just a, a variety of artifacts. There's a, a drawing that surprised me of Ellen Hayes when they worked together. Um, there's the Dan Yankees and the Oliver program. There's his, uh, his the contents of his wallet and with his SAG card and things like that were all on display in this exhibit at the Sheldon. There's his, another shot. There's his wallet there. Um, Vincent Price's grandfather invented baking powder. I don't know if you knew that or not. Dr. Price, and we had some artifacts from uh, his grandfather's company. Uh, more stuff. There was a letter from uh, from Ernest Hemingway there to Vincent Price. There's a, a sketch. Vincent Price used to do a little watercolors. In the lower left, you'll see that. Um, this is the actual robe that Vincent Price wore in the movie The Abominable Doctor Fives. This fellow here. Ironing it is a guy named Cortland Holes, a friend of mine. He brought it in from, uh, from Connecticut. He collects things, and he was good friends with Vincent Price. We had that. We also had the, the jacket and the hat that Vincent Price wore in the House of Wax. Tons of movie memorabilia, of course. Uh, movie posters, lobby cards. Vincent Price toys and model kits and books and Vincent Price, the shrunken head toy. There's, there's more of that kind of stuff. Super 8 films, paperback. Vincent Price movie ties. We did a second exhibit over at the uh, Star Clipper Comic Show, and I asked about 20 local artists to do uh, portraits and paintings and drawings of Vincent Price. We had the Vincent Price art exhibit at the um, Star Clipper Comics. This was all in the, I guess, the spring of 2011. Then we did the film festival, the Vincent Price Film Festival. Uh, most of it was at the high point, but some of it, the opening night was here at the History Museum. We showed the fly. There's me, and dressed up as the fly. I'm attacking Chris Clark from Cinema St. Louis. This is a great fly costume somebody locally had made and let me borrow. Uh, one of our guests of honor was Roger Corman. Roger Corman uh, was a, a legendary film producer. Uh, he discovered everybody. Jeff Nicholson, Martin Scorsese, Francis Coppola all worked for Roger Corman at American International Pictures earlier in their careers. If it wasn't for Roger Corman, these guys wouldn't have had careers. That's how much of a legend this guy is. Uh, but Roger Corman, what's, what's that? Well, no, no, Roger Corman is what a talented and accomplished director he was himself and could be. It's, it's most apparent if you watch these Vincent Price, Edgar Allan Poe movies that Roger Corman had directed, like Pit and the Pendulum and Two of Ligia, the really good movies. But he came along and gave him a, he actually was here two nights with him. He was interviewed on stage by Tim Lucas. Uh, at the high point, we showed, um, we showed Two of Ligia one night, we showed Mask of the Red Death which were both a part of the um, Edgar Allan Poe series that Vincent Price is part There's uh, there's Roger Corman reading our St. Louis Globe Democrat. There I am with Roger Corman. I had a stack of movie memorabilia that Roger Corman directed for me. Uh, we did this, uh, I shouldn't say we, the Magic Smoking Monkey Theater did a stage version of the abominable Dr. Fives. They're an offshoot of St. Louis Shakespeare. They always take a movie and do like a spoof, like a Monty Python type spoof, and they did a, the Abominable Black Fives is a stage play. There's John Contini, he's a local uh, Kevin Klein award-winning actor. He came out and did a, an evening, an evening with Edgar Allan Poe, which is something, a, a TV special that Vincent Price had done where he recited Edgar Allan Poe poems, and John sort of recreated that for us. That, this, shot, this was shot right here on the stage. And our other guest of honor was Victoria. Victoria Price, Vincent Price's daughter. She was born in 1963, when Vincent Price was uh, in his early 50s. She was a guest of honor as well. There she is standing in, at the uh, exhibit, and, there, and I took her over to NYCBS with her father's alma mater, and there's a Vincent Price Black Box Theater there, there's a, a picture of Vincent Price drawn by Hirschfeld, Al Hirschfeld. Uh, that's Cliff Sachs from the archivist at NYCBS showing Victoria some pictures that she had never seen of her father before. It got really dark outside right, right about this moment. That was the week we had all those horrible tornadoes. Um, so we had to go down to the basement of NYCBS there. There's Victoria Price sitting on the gymnasium, or the locker room, I should say, floor of the basement of NYCBS, which was her father and alma mater because of the tornadoes. Um, and then she gave this wonderful talk right here at the History Museum on May 27, 2011, about her father. It was a, it was a great night. And it's, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up because I don't want to go over time. Victoria, though, is a wonderful, wonderful woman and a great speaker. She's a good friend of mine. She'll be back. She'll be back July 1st, and she'll be speaking at the um, 
Ethical Society. Um, that's a Sunday. I don't know what time. You can get on Ethical Society's website. I think it's in the afternoon uh, that she'll be speaking there. Um, so that's it. I just want to say directing uh, Vincent Tindall was, was really a, a wonderful experience for me. I made so many friends. I thought I met Rabbit. Uh, was, he invited me to be on King Wax a couple of times. Um, but sure, come see me at the, the, my illustrator history of the St. Louis Drive-In Movie Theaters on June, uh, June 14th. Thank you.